Hello everyone and welcome to another oil painting video. Um, we're going a little smaller today. We were at 12 by 16, now we're going 8 by 10. And there's a method to the madness. Um, I like smaller paintings. I have a lot of paintings that are um, 5 by 7, 6 by 8, 8 by 10, 9 by 12, like that. I do like doing the occasional big one, 24 by 36 and, you know, 18 by 24, stuff like that. But there's something about the small paintings that I really like. There's this, I don't know, intimacy or something with it that it's just a lot of fun. You can still use big brushes, you know, we're still going to use our two inch brush a little bit. Maybe not as much as some of the others, um, but we're going to do everything the same. So we've got our walnut elkid medium on our palette and we've got our Payne's Gray and Sap Green. This rings a bell, right? And then we're just going to slot this on. You can see it drip in there a little bit. Now, what I want to do today, I have a little bit of a preconceived notion of what I want to do, where usually I don't. I want to do all trees in the back, okay? Um, and I'm going to probably go... Real big, let's say on the left. And then gradually make my way down. And right now, as you can see, I'm just using the, that's too big, so I wanna use just the side of the brush. And you know, if, once you get practice, you can manipulate the brush to do whatever you want it to do. that. There we go like that. Lift up a little bit. You know, what I'm doing here is just, I got excess paint here. Okay, so I'm just kind of making it go around. And that's one of the beauties of this style of painting. You just manipulate the paint however you want to do it. So, wipe off my brush and I'm going to go right into not going to clean it look how dirty it is but we're going to have a lot of green so there's going to be a lot of green on the water so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go water up here and I'm going to make it go down just a little bit Not sure where it's going here yet. Let's see here. Get up. And right now I'm using French Ultramarine and Corillion. I think that's the name of it. Yeah. Um, I thought at first it was uh, uh, much just lighter blue and stuff, but it's this instead of Cerulean, it's pronounced Corillium and the uh, Georgian oil. Um, I've got uh, Griffin Elkid on all my paint except that one. It's a color I wanted to try. So I'm giving it a try. See if I like it. I mean, it's kind of a pretty color. Okay, now, what should we do with the rest of this? Do you want this straight as land? Because <sighs> this is going to be still. This isn't going to be like a river or anything else. So this is going to be pretty stationary. I'll do just do it like this. I want to use this side of the brush just to get everything relatively straight. Move the sides a little bit, that doesn't hurt. Okay, so we got a landmass there, and then we're gonna go into some Van Dyke Brown. We're gonna make another landmass right here. Okay, the only preconceived notion I had in this whole painting was the forest. So, there we go. I didn't want to make it straight across. It looked boring, so I wanted to... There we go. And the 
only thing I see wrong from looking at a distance is this is on a slight tilt up. So I'm gonna wipe off my brush. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring down that there we go now it's straight and I'll make this straighter I'll curve this around I'll get this so it's easier there we go Okay, now I'm gonna actually clean this brush because I've got all of our big areas already plotted in. So just wipe it off with the paper towel to get the excess off. Try to get as much as you can with the paper towel and then I'll just save on your brush cleaner. You're not gonna have as many thick things of paint in there. And it just makes it last a little longer. it off with my rag a little bit these are really nice i don't remember what they were but they were pretty cheap and it was a bag of rags from blick i ordered to try one time i've had them for about a year now i think like six of them seven of them come in the um the package and they're really nice i like them a lot okay so what are we going to use here you know i'm going to go with a filbert a little bigger one i don't want to use the real two inch brush right now because i got a lot of this stuff going on so I'm going to get the sky in, and then I will tap in the foliage area. So for the sky, I don't want a lot of color in it as far as thick color. I'll show you what I mean. See how that is? We're going to have that. But that's it for straight color. And I always like putting alizarin crimson with my French ultramarine for a sky. I always just... I love the drum in the sky. So I'm gonna take the brush and we're gonna clean it, okay? Because Elizabeth Crimson is a stain color. It's a powerful color. And what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna add titanium white. And then that's what I'm gonna use to diffuse this a little bit. And that's what I'm gonna use to go in between the trees a little bit, like you've seen me do a bunch of times. But I wanted the brush clean for that Otherwise, it'd be too dark coming in. See how that lights up pretty good? Okay. Wipe the brush. And now we'll start going in. Now you see that green coming in again like we've been doing. Which I love. I don't know what's wrong with uh, our parrot today. My wife's upstairs uh, doing her uh, jewelry business and he usually goes crazy when she's not around. So he's been pretty quiet today. Hope he's okay. He's a pain in my neck when I do uh, videos at times, but uh, he's a good bird overall. Whenever I sneeze, he's Kind of mimics the words bless you a little bit and it's funny too because depending on how many times i sneeze that's how many times i'll say it so he i guess can count so that's pretty cool okay i washed i didn't wash i rinse, uh wiped the brush off still got the stuff on it i'm just gonna we're doing the same thing as um we do with the bigger paintings with the two inch brush the only difference is we're using this Now what I'm going to do, wipe this off. I want to put just a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit of clouds in there. I usually don't put a lot of clouds in my paintings. Um, it's not, you know, any specific reason. I like clouds, but most of the time it's not a focal point of mine. But um, for some reason I got the hankering to put a little bit of clouds in there. What I'm going to do with my cloud, 
I'm going to go with a little bit of French ultramarine by itself. Oh, look at that big bristle coming out. You'll see the method that are madness here in a bit. Okay. Once I got that, then I'll wipe it. Then I'll take a little bit of titanium white. Put that up there. I'm not going to have some of the foliage cover this a little bit, but I did want something in there with a little bit of color. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the brush cleaner on my fan brush that I just used that on because what I'm going to need from the fan brush, I need clean color later. Now I'm going to use a clean, dry, one-inch brush. And you've seen me do this a bunch of times, barely touching it. I don't want to blend the color. I want to just diffuse it and move it around. Okay. That's all you do. Barely, you can hear it a little bit, scraping the canvas, actually the linen. But it's not, uh, I know you can't see the streaks in which way they're going on video, but my head's right into it so I can see it. And that's all I'm doing is I'm taking out brush lines. And now I'm just going to and it's just get a soft bottom. That's all this is. Let me get back and see how that looks. Oh, there you go. I can deal with that. I can deal with that. Okay. So now we're going to take... Actually, I'm just going to use the same brush I just got. Then what I'm going to do... Just like I always used to do. I'm going to use it like this. Tap it in just to get my foliage shapes. That's all I'm doing. And you can see I keep going where the thicker paint was to uh, get more paint on there. So I'm not using any paint from the palette. Almost leave it like that. Man, there's part of me that's thinking about it. I'm going to actually go on to something else for a while and um, come back to that. I really like the way that looks. Okay, right now I got some Windsor Lemon, my French Ultramarine. Putting some land here. I want to get the land around the top of the bank of the pond, lake, whatever that is that this is. Um, just so it's easier when I put in the water itself. Because a lot, well not a lot of this, but some of this is going to go right into the water and give it that real pretty color. See, I like the way that looks here. And like I said, it's hard to see in the video. But I've got light and medium and dark. I've got so many really cool um, configurations here with the lights and the darks of those greens. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take a really small amount of green and yellow on the fan brush and just use the corner in a few areas. I'm not going to really devour it with um, with color. So I 
really like the way I think we're gonna go with a real simple composition on this one we're not I mean I didn't have that in mind but I really like the way that's shaping up and like I said the way the different lights and darks are going with that I just yeah we'll see how it goes okay next thing we're gonna do get some water in here Don't want it real heavy. There we go. Now one of the things I am going to do is a little bit of reflections. I want to get the water a little bit more opaque first. It's not necessary. Just for right now, I want to. I want everything established. Yeah, that was too much, so. Now, my brown down here was way too thick. I got way too much in the water. So, here's a trick and one of the many reasons why you love water, uh, why I love oil paint. Get all the extra excess paint off. And then I'll put more blue and carillion on my brush. Put that up here a little bit. Okay. And then you reestablish it. Okay. So, the next thing I'm going to do, what, what am I doing with that? Put it in the wrong place. Okay, the next thing I want to do is I want to have some of this in here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take in my sack green. And I'm pulling down reflections. Now, you can do this in a couple of different ways. You can put the reflections in first and then put the blue around it for the uh, part of the water that doesn't have the reflections, or you can do it the way I did it, okay, and put the water in first. Doesn't matter. Whichever your preference is. This isn't a mirrored reflection where we're going to see every little thing. I just want that dark reflection in the water just to show it as a reflection. Okay, so you saw me pulling down. Okay, so now I'm going to take the same dirty brush. I just wiped it off real good. Go lightly. Cross. Okay. There we go. And you try to keep it as straight as you can. We're going to be putting in water lines here shortly. I just, like I said, you probably can't see in the video, but I got a real thick piece right here. And that's why I'm going a little bit more. Okay, so, yeah, that looks pretty good, actually. Once the water line gets in, it's going to make a lot more sense to you. Okay, so, the next thing I'm going to do, take Payne's Gray. I'm going to go up into this a little bit. Just a little. I'm going to put a few flowers in there um, as finishing touch at the end. I'm not going to go crazy with flowers on this one like I have in other ones. As much as I love uh, wildflowers and spring flowers and everything else, I'm not going to lose my mind over it like I usually do. But I am going to have some to put uh, a little bit of extra color in there. Okay, so the next thing I want to tackle, those trees in the back. And I absolutely love the way they look. Let me see what brush I want to use. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use a dagger brush. Daggers are a cool brush. You have a lot more control with the dagger than you do other ones. So what I'm going to do, like I said, I don't want a ton 
of stuff to break this up. So what I'm going to do is I just want to have some highlight in some areas. So I'm going to use the tip of the dagger. Just put it in. Okay. I know this looks a little tedious than it is to a degree. I don't want a ton of color everywhere. I really like the way those look. But it just, it needed just a little bit. There we go. This is not all that dissimilar from how you do mountains as far as the highlights and stuff like that. That's basically what this is. I'm just giving it a little bit of highlight. And I'm not going to go all over the place with the highlight. Right now I'm doing the peaks, the tops. And I'm doing them as separate shapes, as you can tell. Not putting them all together. The reason, because you're not going to paint every individual leaf. When you're painting, you're going to paint shapes. You're going to paint an umbrella. You're going to paint just an area. And that's going to give it that real nice full look. There we go. Now that we got the tops, now we'll just pick out some more shapes here and there. I apologize for this being a little bit tedious here, but I really liked the way they came out. So I, first I was going to use a, a palette knife, which is what we did in the last painting for the leaves. But I didn't want it. Everything started coming real subtle for this painting, including the water and everything else. So I really didn't want to make anything crazy. That's why I'm kind of, I'm just going to kind of clean it up a bit here and there. see how that looks there you go actually I do like that okay now that we got that done now I'm going to where's my pellet knife okay so now we're gonna put the water lines in once the water lines are in then we'll take care of this some flowers and we're going to be good. So water lines, I'm going to use the um, pellet knife. Just going to touch. I'm not going to go crazy. There we go. I think that's going to be it. I have a tendency, and you've seen in my other videos, to go crazy with the water lines and make it rough, make it this, make it whatever. In this case, everything in my head is just keeps telling me all painting long here, just less is more, less is more. And that's what I want to kind of do. Less is more here. And I don't want to, I don't want to make it to where I overwork it either. It started out one way. It ended up going to real simplistic for a um, design and stuff. So I'm just going to kind of enjoy the simplicity of it and go from there. Take a little bit of yellow. 
Remember when we put those in with the brush, the uh, paint gray there? I just want to ground them. There we go. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do, I'm actually going to use the same fan brush. I'm going to go with the Payne's Gray. I'm going to do the same thing I did back there. That'll give us a nice little base to put our flowers. Yep, I missed the water line there a little bit. Doesn't matter. It's going to be covered with flowers sooner than later. Take some yellow with the paint's gray and some land. done with this fan brush which is good it's about ready to fall apart on me so after the session I have to take the ferrule off the shaft put some Gorilla Glue on it put it back in and then uh, let it go Gorilla Glue is a wonderful glue for brushes I found because you got this brush here I don't know if you can tell but you know it's moving real bad and that's just not a good thing. So a little bit of griddle glue inside of it and you're in good shape. Okay, so I'm going to find my trusty foliage brush, which I always love and I told you about. Okay, I could use a palette knife, but a palette knife isn't going to be as subtle. Um, and I want more subtle. And I'll just give you an example of what I'm talking about here. Just like with the foliage here, you see how soft and gentle that is? Okay, here's with a palette knife. And this is one of the videos we did, uh, I think this was last week. And here's the palette knife foli uh, flowers and stuff. I love the look, but they're too rough for this. And I don't want to contrast so much where it looks out of place. So I'm going to leave everything kind of similar. So... Go into the Alizarin Crimson. And this is still pretty thick. You know, like a palette knife would be. But it just... More control. I'll put some in the back. I don't even know if I'm going to add bluebells. That might be too much. Okay, now I'm not going to wash the brush before I add the yellow, but I am going to wipe it off to get the bulky alizarin crimson off. And I'm going to go straight into my Windsor Lemon. See, I got the nice look without it going in your face. I didn't want the in your face. Into the tree line just a little bit. And I'll put a little bit down here. And we're just about there, folks. One of the things, too, that I don't know if it's better or not for YouTube. Some people like the longer videos and the, with the real big paintings. Others prefer the little uh, canvases and the um, shorter videos. If you have a preference, please let me know. Um, I prefer the small ones, but I also enjoy the large. So for me, it's really whatever you like is... Uh, Fine by me. 
Okay, one more thing I gotta do here. I gotta ground this. And what I mean by ground, see how these are coming down here? I hope you can see it in the video. And it just looks like it's out of place. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tap into it and blend it into the landscape. So it looks like it actually is part of it. Coming from the ground. See what I mean? And just a hair more yellow. There we go. Okay, folks, that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this painting. It's a nice little, like I said, eight by 10. And it's a very simplistic, soft kind of uh, look to it. So I hope everybody has a great uh, rest of your weekend and a great work week. Happy St. Patty's Day to anybody that celebrates out there. And I hope everybody takes care.